Hello, it's good that you could join with us on this Remembrance season. The four of us pictured on the screen, we're going to have a chat about what Remembrance means to us and what it, how we let it lead us in our worship and in our lives. And for me, I'm going to start because I always find Remembrance a very hard service. Not in terms of that I mourn the loss of people that I know, because none of my family that I know of have given their lives in the service of the country. I just find it very hard to get the right level of remembering the sacrifice without glorifying the war and, uh, and the loss of life. Uh, and strangely, we've been in the parish of Cluny and Manimask for almost 30 years now, and it was about seven years ago that we found that a relative of my wife is actually on the Money Musk War Memorial. And so it became a wee bit more meaningful at that point. Not that we knew that at the time until the local undertaker told us that. But uh, it's it's just, it's it's a difficult time for some and it's an emotional time for, for some. So, Neil, how do you view remembrance? What, what does it mean to you? Well, the, the odd thing for me is, of course, I, I, I'm, I'm in a sense a newcomer to the traditions of remembrance, certainly in the UK. Um, obviously, South Africa was involved in the wars, First and, and Second World Wars. Um, and so Remembrance Day is celebrated there, but nothing like on the scale uh, that it is in the UK. So I've also struggled to just kind of get my head around what's, what people understand by, by remembrance here. So I understand your concern, Ewan. I guess the, look, I, I, I totally understand why people, what, what we need to remember those who have sacrificed in, in wartime and, and that there's, there's reason to do that. I guess what puzzles me most coming from a South African perspective is the relationship between church and state at a time like this. Um, I have, uh, uh, the South African background is that we, the church often saw itself in opposition to the state, certainly during the apartheid years. So, and, and there's a tradition of being critical of the state. And one, the one thing that troubles me most about Remembrance Day here, not so much in the church, but in the media, is the way that um, the church's role seems to be just on the side of the state. Uh, um, and I, I don't think everybody feels that way. But certainly it appears that way in the media sometimes to me. Right. Fiona, what, what about you? What's your view? Uh, yeah, I mean, my, my, my early mem uh, memories of Remembrance uh, Sunday was always um, being very cold because I was a brownie and then a guide and there was lots of uh, marching to the um, War Memorial and freezing because uh, we weren't allowed to wear jackets so that was certainly uh, as a as a sort of a youngster that was that was my early sort of remembrances of it but it is something which i have struggled with quite a lot partly because in my family i have um my grandfather was a conscientious objector but he was also um, a volunteer in the fire brigade in london um during the war and i think that he's not something he speak he ever spoke about an awful lot i think it was something he found very hard um his brother um, did fight, he fought um, in India, um, but my great grandfather was also a conscientious objector, having been an ambulance driver during the First World War. Um, so from a personal point of view, I have very mixed feelings about um, not, as you said earlier, not glorifying war in any way, shape or form. And I think that's really important, but I do think that in whatever way people sacrificed needs to be remembered um, and for some people that was a sacrifice of life but there were people at home who sacrificed a lot as well sacrificed loved ones um, uh, but but sacrificed um, their standing in society by by standing up for what they truly believed um, and I think it's really important to kind of um, take all of that because all of that is caused by war and all of that is is damaging um and it needs healing from um and as a as a nation we need to heal from that um certainly obviously in more recent times it the any conflicts more recently 
have been more of an individual or a family sacrifice. It's not been quite such a big um, national um, th uh, thing as it would have been during the World Wars, but there is still um, sort of the, our safety is being kept and our, uh, our personal freedoms are being kept by people who are willing to make sacrifices. Um, in lots and lots and lots of ways. So I think that's what a lot of remembrance has got to do for me is, is a lot of tied up with just loss of life is not always the only sacrifice which people made and it's important to remember all of them. Well, thank you for that. I'm of an age, I remember that it seemed to be that the remembrance aspect was almost drifting away. You never really heard much of two minute silence in schools and things of that nature until the Iraq war started and we saw these the coffins coming back and going through you know the, the towns with the you know the people lining the streets and then it seemed to become much more important again in the psyche of the nation to to remember Sheila how does it affect you I think just just listening to the three of you talking actually I I think what you're all saying actually it resonates a lot with me. I've, I've found, always found Remembrance one of the most challenging services in the year to lead. And I think it's something about pitching it where you're not being too political, but you're being culturally sensitive. You're working with the local people and the local culture within a community. And actually that's one of the big learnings I think although remembrance as Neil is as you're saying is such a, a British thing in its entirety and we kind of think there's one blueprint actually there's real subtleties in different communities about what's expected and how things are done and who's involved and there is a really close alignment between church and state in inverted commas for remembrance and it raises all sorts of questions for me, not because I'm anti-state in any way, but I wonder where the church's prophetic voice is in all of this in terms of talking about war or peace. And actually, to be perfectly honest, I would very often shy away from those sorts of those comments or themes in remembrance because somehow that feels almost inflammatory. And yet, why should it? Because these are central themes to human beings. And the church has really powerful things to say on the subject of peace, as well as in the subject of remembrance. You know, re remembering is such a key theme to us as, as Christians and to us as, as human beings and across every culture, remembering is extremely important. And I think unless we remember, we can't change. We can't look ahead. So I think the act of remembering is incredibly important, however we mark it. But I think the culture is changing. Um, I see different people incorporating different rituals, perhaps, in what they're doing. That's easier in some places and less easier in others. So, you know, maybe we become the living embodiment of a change of ritual as time goes on. And maybe that's a good thing perhaps remembrance shouldn't stay static the way that it's always been or the way that it's always expected. There's maybe other ways which are equally dignified and appropriate to mark to mark the occasion. So it, it is, it's, it's a fascinating from a cultural and historic perspective, but at the same time, it's such an important and symbolic marker, I think, in the year in terms of we you know we think of our our own life we think of the people that we've perhaps known who have served or indeed who have died and we think of it from a state and then a global perspective as well you know, there, there's all sorts of themes and levels i think contained within remembrance so it is it's, it's interesting for me it's fascinating it's difficult it's hard it's challenging i think it's all these things to be perfectly honest yes it, it strikes me that the, the, the relationship between church and remembrance, I was always early on in my, my ministry surprised that I would see 
a set number of people in both churches who would only ever come to church for that service, for the remembrance, because it meant so much to them. Uh, and, I mean, kind, decent, hard-working folk they were, but they didn't really, I, I'm not sure they came to worship, they came to remember and to uh, and it was probably probably uh, it was part of their culture to do that uh, it's those folk are, have sadly passed the passed on now but it's it's still a big part of our our culture and i uh, and i think the fact that you see it on the media now with railway stations on uh, the 11th hour and the 11th day and people are standing about we're being more i'm not saying indoctrinated but we're being more encouraged to do this I mean I've a couple of times in the last two years at Remembrance Day people have said well did you stand up for two minutes at the 11th I've forgotten all about it to be frank because I was on my own I was in this this study and I never really thought too much about it uh, and when I said that to one person a couple of years ago they were really quite annoyed that I had forgotten uh, uh, but that's just me. It's, it's as I said, it's not easy for me remembrance, and it's not something that that is high in my calendar of of important events. But I recognise that it's important as the parish minister that I have my my part to play in in allowing people their ritual, their their remembrance, and it is important to so many people. I, w I wonder how much you and I wonder how much of that is is governed by things like time and and generation. Um, my my girls have just been watching uh, Downton Abbey. Uh, they they've been binge watching that during the, the the lockdown, and so there's the whole thing about the war and the, the erect, you know putting up uh, uh, um, war memorials and things like that. Um, and you have a sense that it, it was such an alive thing. For the generation that went through it, and and uh, and not just the First World War, but the Second World War too, um, and and absolutely there was the need to to, to remember, and it was a, as you as I said, it was an alive issue for those those folk. I wonder how that has drifted in people's minds um, over the the, the decades, um, and. What, what 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 are you remembering? And I, and I do think I think this is where the gospel does have to at least challenge people to ask them um, to, to put before them the question: Is is this about um, a kind of unquestioning sense of nationalism, uh, which which I would have problems with, or is it a true sense of of uh, repentance and and pain and grief? Or the the horrors that that uh, um, war visited on us uh, and others, um, and I, I I think that is a very valid question to ask people because as I say I sometimes in some of the the uh, the way it is portrayed uh, in 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 society I sometimes get the feeling that for some people it's nudging towards a sense of nationalism national pride in in our military. Uh, and less so what I what I understand in principle remembrance should be the, the sense of of loss and, and pain and, and grief. And I, I think Neil that you've hit it you've hit the nail in the head there I think that's the tension that so many ministers feel and I'm trying to work out in a, a form of words that's dignified and respectful how to represent those things appropriately it's yeah. it's interesting you know just as an anecdote um the the homily that i used for for the worship actually is a story about rudyard kipling and i was saying to some of the the others earlier he almost touched exactly on what it is that you're describing because he lost a son age 18 in his only son actually in the war and never was able to find him or know where he was buried within his lifetime. It was only after he died that John Kipling um, was identified. But paradoxically, it was Kipling who was tasked with working with Winston Churchill to come up with the titles and the inscriptions on the memorials. So 
his words were, you know, known unto God, that was Kipling, and the words on the Cenotaph in London as well were Kipling. But he absolutely struggled with the thought of war. And he struggled with the idea of, um, of that side of that sort of state involvement. And there's a kind of irony in there, and it, I think it just illustrates beautifully that tension of, of the anger and the grief and the frustration of personal loss, and yet his legacy of some of the most beautiful and powerful words actually that contribute even yet today to remembrance. But, you know, he was a man who really believed that, um, and that there's a quote I mentioned in the homily, you know, one of his, I think it finishes, you know, in other words, tell them, tell the people that, you know, the state has lied, that and it's mm. really, really difficult, but so human, such a human expression of the tensions that exist. So, so I, I wonder then, uh, we, we've spoken a, a bit about the, uh, the, the generation that remembered, and obviously some of them are still with us. Um, I don't know about you guys, but we have quite a lot of, um, of young people through the, the organizations, the, the, the Scouts and the Boys Brigades and all the Girls Guides and so forth. So, so I find a, one of the things that Remembrance Days, I'm talking a lot to the next generation. So I'm curious to hear, what, what do you guys feel our, our message from the church should be to the next generation in the context of remembrance. I can't help but feel that a lot of it is to do with the importance of ritual. And this is, you know, first of all, looking back to the older generations, the importance of the ritual, um, the security and the safety and the healing nature of a repetitive ritual, which no, we know comes around every year. Um, and that's looking back to previous generations. But to answer your question about uh, the new generations, I think there's a whole new, unfortunately, with with things to do with terrorism and things like that, there's a whole new type of um, thing to remember, of, of violence and, and things to remember. And it's this, we must never forget uh, thing, um, because if we forget, then it can be repeated. And I think that that's where it comes from for, for future generations. And I mean, you know, we, we see it in discussions about the Holocaust and things like that. And, you know, even, you know, it's, it's quite scary to think that, uh, you know, our children and that don't remember the 9-11 um, and for them that's history. Uh, whereas for us, that's very much a present. Um, and, and it's so quickly these things slip out of memory. Um, they, they slip from being an experience to being a memory, to being something my parents remembered, to being something my grandparents remembered. And I think that that's where remembrance comes in, is it actually brings it back into the present and we connect what's happened in the past to what is now happening in the present. Um, and we try and prevent it from happening in the future um, by humanizing it, by putting names to it, by saying that this is real, these were real people, um, you know, maybe going back, my, you know, my great grandfather was, or my great great grandfather was in the, in the first or second world war or whatever, however the generation is working. My, you know, I knew somebody, I know somebody, I know, you know, I can connect to this event. And if we can connect to the events, then we can remember them. And if we remember them, then hopefully we learn not to repeat our mistakes, but. <laughs> Human history does not, unfortunately, um, does not, unfortunately, uh, show that that is the, that is the case. But that is that, that that is the hope, and that is the importance of remembering, um, is to not repeat our mistakes. I I've never really given too much thought about uh, preaching to the next generation. If I'm totally honest, at these services we have the guides. Uh, come to Money Musk but well they used to come to Money Musk and I, I don't I, I one of the ones you used a wee while back Neil was repentance I've never thought of it in these terms the remembrance service uh, and that's something that's that's made me think about what's what we've got to do I, I think it's it, as in life it's a balance uh, Am I speaking to the generation who need it, or am I speaking to the next generation 
who perhaps think that they're just as Fiona was in her younger days, freezing cold at the, the remembrance uh, experience. And some of the, 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 the girls and with us, I'm sure a lot of them were wondering why they were in church doing a, a, a service of remembrance. Uh, but I, I still think there's a place for it, but it's, it's you know, it, it's, it's necessary in terms of sharing memories but I think it's it's frightening if it's going to be used. We're seeing a world that's becoming much more nationalist, and uh, and and I I fear that we're that there's a temptation to tap into that uh, stream of consciousness now that uh, we're okay and we've got to look after ourselves and we'll forget everybody else. And and if we become too jingoistic about war. We're, we're feeding that sort of culture which uh, it seems to me uh, so sad that it's becoming so international, it's not just in our land or in other big lands but in small countries as well uh, and I think we've got to balance it but I really I, I really don't know is the honest answer how I, how I speak to the next the next generation uh, and whether they'd actually listen I think we have a, a generation, Ewan, as, as well, that identifies war perhaps in a different way, more in terms of conflict, because wars are not now, I suspect, as definable as starting in one year and finishing with a truce in another year. It's, we're in a different kind of world, and therefore the understanding of younger people now is, is potentially quite different. For me, I've always tried to open up remembrance to acknowledge, at least in some way, other conflicts in the world and the, the ongoing death in conflict. And I, I tend to use that word rather than war as a way of trying to connect to what's happening in, in the present and rooting remembrance, not, not just all those years ago in the world wars, which yes, we should remember, but I think if, if remembering has any power at all, then all the people who are lost in conflict deserve remembrance, even if they are, are nameless or faceless to us. And I think that's important to me as a Christian, that's important. I, I want to acknowledge that loss of life in its widest, in its widest form. Mm. Folks, I think that's, we've given a flavour of how we interpret remembrance Everybody watching this, no doubt, will have their own understanding and their own expectations of remembrance. And, you know, as the, the says, we will remember how we do it is is open for discussion and debate. But it is important to so many people. So thanks very much for joining with us on this day of remembrance. And uh, we hope to do some of these on some other topic in the future. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.